Hello, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, commentary. Pastor Mike Salmon, as we continue in the Word of God, this is out of the King James Version. Uh, we are using the Greek and uh, Hebrew Strong's Concordance. We continue in uh, Galatians chapter 3, where it says, O foolish Galatians. And again, the Apostle Paul continues in reference to uh, dealing with Judaizers, people who are coming in saying that you have to be you have to obey the law to be saved. He says, oh foolish Galatians, look at the word foolish, uh, it means pretty much a fool, unintelligent, okay, by implication sensual, you unwise, you are unintelligent, anoyatos, anoyatos, um, Galatians, this is how, how strong the Apostle Paul is, is feeling about these Judaizers, he says, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, okay, who has maligned you, who has tricked you, okay, that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth crucified among you. Okay, who's tricked you to believe otherwise? This only would I learn of you. Would you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, you are now made perfect by the flesh? So this is very a rhetorical question in the sense like saying, hey, when you receive the Holy Spirit, was it because you obeyed the law or was it because you believed? And he says, are you now foolish? Okay, again, he uses the word uh, foolish. Are you now unintelligent? Stupid? Do you not, if, if you began uh, in receiving the Spirit by faith, are you now made perfect by the law? How are you going backwards now? In other words, have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He, therefore, that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law? Of course not. Or by the hearing of faith? So think about all the miracles, all the things that God has done in your life. Was it because you believed faith? Or is it because you were so obedient to God? You were just perfect to God. And because you were perfect, God, God just did miracles. No, God did many miracles in our life. Now, don't get me wrong, God blesses you, and God does bring blessing to us because of our obedience. But our most, our blessings come because we just believe in God and we have faith. So the Apostle Paul is now about to get into some kind of, uh, or give us a little analogy in a sense, uh, using Abraham as an example. And he says, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, that's you and I, Gentiles, through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. All right, so he's saying he made this promise to Abraham that by Abraham all nations will be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. It's those who are faith. We just trust in God. We depend on God. We're not depending on our obedience, on our flesh, or any of that. We're obedient, obedient to God. This is important because the Gentiles, uh, the Galatian church was now being told that you have to be circumcised. You have to obey the law, you know, to be blessed or to be saved, pretty much. And Jesus is saying, look, Abraham just believed God. And God did the rest in his life. He says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So we all know not there is no one who can do everything. Okay? There's no way that there's anyone who could do everything written in the book. Okay? It's impossible. But yet God saved us by faith. So those who decide they want to obey the law, they have to do everything written in the book of the law. In other words, you can't just choose what law you want to serve. Some people in their faith, they say, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to start obeying the Sabbath because I'm made righteous. Seventh-day Adventists uh, uh, are based their um, theology on the seventh day, the Saturday, the Sabbath. And then they even go forth and say that if you don't obey the Sabbath, you're not going to be saved. Um, you can't do that. You cannot just choose to do, obey the Sabbath. 
you have to not only say, if righteousness comes by obedience to one of the laws, you have to obey all the laws. All right, You can't just be married to the law only on Saturday. In other words, yeah, you have to be married to it every day. And what, that ha what happens then is you're condemned in everything. Because you can't obey it. And then he goes, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not a faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Again, very strong, very strong word, justification, meaning show or regard just as innocent. There's no way, no man is found innocent by the law. We know that. So why try to be made innocent by obeying the law? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being a made a curse for us so he became the payment the penalty he paid the penalty by being crucified on the cross and how do you do for it is right to curse it is everyone that hangs on the tree that the blessing and this is why jesus was crucified he was crucified so that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith okay so praise god for that that we can be that we are saved by faith not by obedience in the law brethren i speak after the manner of men though it be but a man's covenant yet if it be confirmed no man no disannuls it or adds there too and he again he's saying look if there's a covenant you cannot just throw out the gov the covenant the covenant even a man's covenant cannot be disannulled okay it's it's perfect. It cannot be uh, destroyed. In other words, okay, this is set aside or violated or neutralized. And so, if God gave a covenant, you know God cannot is not going to just remove the covenant. Okay. So it says now to Abraham. It says now to Abraham. Sorry. Uh, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He says not and two seeds as of many but as of one and to thy seed which means Christ or which is Christ so when when God told Abraham by your seed all nations will be blessed he does not mean by the by the seeds of Abraham meaning Isaac Jacob and the Jews and all this stuff that's not what he's talking about when he said to Abraham by your seed he's talking about Christ it was by Christ that all nations are blessed, not by Judaism and not by the Jews. Even though salvation had come from the Jews, because Jesus was a Jew, he had come from the Jews, it was not by the Jews that all nations are blessed. It was by Christ, who was a Jew and the seed of Abraham, we all nations are blessed. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, for the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So in other words, the, pro the, the law, when God gave Abraham the promise, he gave him the promise. And then 430 years later, God gave the people of Israel the law. Just because the law had come does not mean that the promise is not there. So for example, if I say... I promise you that I'm going to give you ice cream in an hour. That's my promise. And then later on, 30 minutes later, I say, you know what? I'm going to buy you a hamburger. So what that says to me is not only are you going to get a, a ice cream, but you're going to get a hamburger also. So just because I promised you a hamburger or doesn't mean that the ice cream becomes null and void. Okay, very important that we understand that just because the law came does not mean that the promise it disannuls the promise. The, the law came doesn't know doesn't mean that the 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 promise is disannulled or it's set aside or invalidated. The promise is still there. The promise was coming through Christ, not by the law. And so then it goes on. For if the inheritance be of the law, then it is no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then? Where, how does this, how then does this serve, does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions, and watch this, until what? The seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now, 
A mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Absolutely not. Well, God forbid. So the law is not against the promise just because it shows it we're a sinner or anything. It's, it's not against the promise. The law was given to us to keep us on track. For example, if I'm traveling from, let's say, for example, Arizona to California, there are lines that are on the road, and those lines don't get me to California. Those lines only keep me in my lane until I get to California. All right, it's the car that gets me to California. It's my me moving in the car, so the lines keep me in. So the law kept the people from transgression. It kept them until uh, it kept them until the promise came. That's what the law was for. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law that could have given life, verily righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all are under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But, watch this, before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which would afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. How does the law bring us to Christ? Well, listen, there is no way you will know or have a need for a Savior until you realize that you need saving. And the law shows us that we're drowning. The law shows us we're guilty. The law shows us that we have problems and we need Christ. That's what the law does. So it was a, it's a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But then after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Okay? We don't need to be taught. We don't need to be told we're sinners. The Holy Spirit deals with that in our life. Okay? For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And the Greek word baptized is baptizo. Okay? Baptizo. And it means, again, to immerse. You see baptize, sorry. And it means to make whelmed, fully wet, of ceremonial ablu uh, ablution, um, especially Christian baptism, okay, where a person is dunked. When you're baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. You have been soaked in Christ. Now watch this. So now, there's neither Jew nor Greek, so it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Greek. It doesn't matter if you're a bond or free person. It doesn't matter if you're a male or a female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. It's very important. So just because a Jew is a Jew or a Greek is a Greek, I can be a Gentile. Oh, well, you know what? Um, even a Jew can be a child of God. And a Jew, just because a person is Jew, doesn't mean they, they're not there. They're a child of God. No, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew. It doesn't matter if you're a Greek. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Okay, this is Jew by flesh not Jew by Judaism. Very important again to remember when he talks about Jew of Judaism versus Jew of religion. And then it says, for if you, and if you be Christ, so if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So think about this. Think about the opposite. If you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed. But what if you are not Christ's, then you are not of Abraham's seed and errors according to the promise. That's why in John 8, uh, hopefully in the future, or if you see, look at the commentary on John 8, Jesus says to him, just because you say you're the children of Abraham doesn't mean you are. For even even God can raise up rocks to be his children. All right? So um, in chapter 3, again, he's really saying that, uh, the summary in chapter 3 is that we are saved by faith. And you cannot just start now obeying the law and thinking you're going to be made righteous by the law. It is faith that has made you a child of God, okay, and heirs according to the promise. Uh, that's the conclusion of Galatians chapter 3. Uh, to continue, go to Galatians chapter 4.